July, but it is early. And I was just checking my comments a moment ago. And uh, at least one person noticed that I forgot to dub in the theme song at the end of yesterday's episode. Yeah, that was kind of funny. I, when I got to the end, I was thinking, like when I was previewing it, I thought to myself, I don't remember putting in the, the theme song today. And uh, I got to the end, sure enough, it just, it just faded out. No music. I think that is the first time that I have done that in this uh, 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 model ship series. I may have done it back downstairs in the workshop, you know, in the past years. But anyway, you know what? The sun will still rise tomorrow. Now, speaking of, of sun rising, uh, it's not going to be coming up here for about an hour and a half. I don't think we're going to see it. It looks pretty overcast at the moment. And uh, now, uh, about the rollback... Uh, it's pretty lengthy and it's pretty boring and it has a lot to do with what how how I uh, fix the uh, leaf blower uh, well as it turns out I didn't really fix it but you have to watch the rollback to see uh, it, it just is not model shippy uh, so I'm gonna in the in the uh, down below, I'm going to put where you can scrub a head to, to, uh, you know, get to the end of it and get into something that has to do with the model ship. Because I know a lot of people are watching that and uh, there's people that are actually building this exact same kit and they're just sort of interested to see, you know, the problems that I have. And in fact, I got a comment from somebody, uh, I think it was in yesterday, yesterday, and they asked, uh, did I have a problem with the deck fitting? Uh, you know, they're, they're also working on, on this exact same kit. So, uh, uh, you know, if, if you're watching this series for the, for the building of the uh, HMS hood from Trumpeter, 1200 scale, uh, well, I guess at times like right this moment, uh, it must be a little exasperating for you because I'll be talking about rabbits and speaking of rabbits, You'll notice that our uh, sunrise camera, which is now the uh, carrot pad camera, doesn't have any carrots on it. It's got something different. Well, we we talk about that in the rollback. Uh, anyway, let's let's just sort of roll back here, and uh, yeah. Well, here's what's happened. Got three solid green lights right now. Probably about, I'm guessing, two hours ago. I, uh, I plugged in the charger and I plugged the battery onto the charger adapter. And when I plugged it into the wall, this green light here was red. These green lights here were flashing in sequence. They were going like blink, 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 blink. And then after I noticed after about 15 minutes, the first one stayed solid green and the last three blinked in se sequence. And then ev eventually I noticed that two stayed, the first two stayed solid and the last two were blinking. Then I sort of forgot about it for a while. And when I looked at it, I guess, uh, oh, almost two hours later, in other words, about half an hour ago, I suppose, all, all the lights are solid. To me, that indicates the battery has charged. Um, now, when I tested the voltage on this, and I haven't, haven't tested it, I've just left it the way you see it. Uh, I, as best I remember, it was around 8.7 something volts total. And uh, I think we should take this to the model table and, and test it out.
Okay, let's uh, recompose a bit here. Now, when I took this thing apart yesterday, I had already concluded that this one right here was the positive, and this one here would be the negative. And uh, later today, I noticed that here it's kind of hard to read, but there's a little little thing that's a little positive sign here and a little negative sign right here. Uh, <clears throat> now, right here is for the aligning pin, and it, and it's very it's very clear that to power this thing up is just the two contacts, you know the 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 uh, positive. Let's see, which one would that be? Yeah, th this one would be the positive. It's closest to the lining pin. And then this one is the negative. Now, once again, I'm giving you a whole bunch of details that you don't need to know. But what I was doing is when I was checking the voltage originally yesterday, I was getting uh, about 8.7 something volts on, on this one right here using this as the ground. These others have, must have something to do with the, with the computer, but I don't know what. Now the charger, uh, I can't remember, was, does it have four pins or just two? Anyway, it doesn't matter. So in order to find out if we've got 20 volts, we're just going to go across from this one and this one. Boy, do I ever belabor something to death, don't I? I must be getting tired. Okay, let's let's recompose here first. Okay. Now this is my first time doing this. After the charge that is. Okay, we're grounded. We got 20.34 volts. Okay, the battery's fully charged because it's a 20 volt battery. It's got five 4 volt cells. Um, okay, let's let's try it and see if it'll run this thing. And once again, this is all uh, is, you know, you're seeing it along with me for the first time. I don't know why that's so important for, to me that you believe me. I guess because in this day and age. We have so much uh, phoniness. Okay, I admit it. When I was setting up this scene, like I was talking about the, you know, there being so much phoniness and, as uh, somebody once said, fake news. Um, anyway, when I was setting up this scene, I did arrange it so that my cup had the word Winnipeg. Uh, perfectly uh, in, in frame, if you might say. Yeah, I, I do that a lot. Boy, am I getting tired. I can't even talk. Let's let's try this thing out before I pass out here or something. Okay, the moment of truth here. want to make sure I'm not going to blow anything off the shelf if it does happen to work. Okay, now my second problem is I'm hoping that my neighbor does not watch this video because he's going to know that I didn't really do anything. I just charged the battery and everything seemed to work. Uh, I, I don't I didn't do anything and what I'm planning on doing is telling him I worked all night on this and I finally figured out what was wrong and I finally got it never got any sleep um, well I, I won't do that but uh, <laughs> yeah uh oh 
I dropped Mr. T's poking device. I show everything, don't I? Well, let's just plug it in and try it again. Um, you know what? I was going to blow it on the on the manual here, but it might waft around and blow my parts out of my little tins here. Um, well, you're just going to have to take my word for it. It works. Okay. There you go, neighbor. I worked all night on that. Okay, as long as we have our tester here. Some of you may remember, well, about a year ago, I took this watch apart and I cleaned the case and as much as I could, I cleaned it up. And at that time, I had quite a few button batteries, but none of them were the right ones for this watch. So I put a little button battery in. It was a lot smaller than what is supposed to actually go in there, but the voltage was right and the contact, it made contact and it worked. So uh, I noticed about three, four days ago, I went to wear this watch and what I will do is I will occasionally wear it for nostalgia's sake, because I got it in uh, 1974, and uh, I'm pretty sure it was, yeah, it was 74, and uh, in fact, I've got a photo that I took of it, and, I, and I'm going to superimpose the photo in right now. And those of you who were our camera buffs, if you're wondering, you're wondering what camera I had back at that time, it was a Konica Auto Reflex T3. Uh, I believe it was the Model 3. I know it was a Konica Auto Reflex anyway. It was my second Auto Reflex. And uh, it, it was a pretty good camera. And at that time, I only had the one lens. It was the 50mm uh, 1.4. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, I, I ordered batteries from Amazon, and they, they came this afternoon. Yep, can't fight his way into a paper bag. Another one. You know, it's a real good thing I can dub out all the silliness that happens here. Okay. So, uh, I, I know that these are not uh, lithium batteries, they're just alkaline batteries. But, you get ten for six dollars and change delivered to the door, I mean. <laughs> All right, let's put one of them in. I guess we, we'll, we'll test it first, just for fun. I'll, I'll recompose here. Okay. Now on these button batteries, they're backwards to what you would think they are. The outside jacket is the positive, not the what you would, not the point. Anyway, let's, let's do the uh, the old one, see if it's still dead, or I think it was around one volt. 9.34. Okay, let's try the new one. One point five nine two. So they're you know they're 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 rated at one and a half volts. So it's one point. It's it's almost one point six. Um, that's 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 okay. It's not going to hurt the watch. All right, let's uh, let's stick it in here. I'll recompose. Okay. Now, if I remember right, I did not screw this on real tight.
I can't remember. Is it supposed to go... Uh, yeah, I think it's supposed to go this way. No. Or was it supposed to go the other way? Ron, you're supposed to be the uh, the expert here. That doesn't seem right. No, that's not right. Go, go, gotta go this way. Let's just check and see. Does this? Well, come on. I haven't done this since what, 1973? Oh yeah, there, there we go. It's just kind of, kind of a tight fit here. I don't want to cross thread it. I know the problem is I'm trying to do this on camera. <sighs> okay, I did have the battery in the right direction. I just couldn't get the thread started. Uh, the the watch band was sort of in the way, and I was trying to hold it for the camera, and, uh, and that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. Anyway, let's set it, and uh, maybe we'll uh, be wearing it in the morning. So, uh, yeah, we'll see you in the morning. Now, I just realized here, if I want this segment to make any kind of sense, I gotta stick this in right now. <laughs> Now I'm pretty sure I can remember saying something to the effect of we're out of carrots. I'm going to have to go to the store and get more carrots. And then I said, well, maybe we can use the dry rabbit food that we bought from Amazon. Yeah, let's give that a try. Because um, that's all we got. Now I suppose I could probably uh, put out some cabbage or something. Uh, or cauliflower, but uh, I want to eat that. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to be giving the rabbits all the people food. Anyway, we'll see what happens here. I'm a little bit concerned because if I remember right, this rabbit food, this dry rabbit food does not do well uh, when it gets wet. So if it snows, it's not going to fare well. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting it up so that if there's motion in the red area, yeah, it, it will notify you. In other words, you don't have to watch the whole thing. Uh, I, it's kind of hard to explain without showing you, and I'm not going to do a tutorial on how to, to work this thing, but I'm sure most of you know how it goes. In other words, I can very quickly go to wherever a rabbit sticks his head in the red area, or in the, <laughs> maybe Missy the dog. So, tomorrow morning when I wake up, I'll just check the screen for uh, the, uh, the motion part of it and uh, see, uh, you know, who came besides Missy the dog. Yeah, that was, that was kind of funny. I had, uh, I had just come in and I noticed in the surveillance camera that Missy, well, I'll show it to you. Yeah. Well, at least she didn't eat it. Yeah. Good thing I like that dog. Well, it's morning. And as you noticed, if you watched the beginning of this episode, I did wear it. I made it pretty obvious, didn't I? And did you notice how I had it synced up to the second with the uh, with the uh, atomic clock? 
it, it, it only uh, stays accurate like that for maybe a few hours and then it slowly gains time. It gains about a second a day, this old watch. Anyway, what I want to do here uh, is I, I do want to check and see if we had movement. Now, I know that we did have at least one rabbit. You know what? I'm going to uh, start talking into this, this microphone because right now I have to kind of shout. There's, there's a lot of noise going on in here. Uh, behind me there is the uh, recorder for this thing and the cooling fan makes a, an awful lot of racket. And so... Uh, now if I uh, can use this microphone like this and keep it in front of my mouth, I don't have to shout and uh, it's, a, it's a lot easier. So, so we're going to just use this from now on. Anyway, what I want to do here, too many mouses. Okay, so it's my intention to see if we had movement here. I think I started to say that when I got up this morning, I saw that there, there was a rabbit uh, at this thing. So I, and it did appear that he was nibbling at this, but I want to see if, if more came during the night. And, and what I'm going to do here, now I need, I need two hands to do this. I'm going to try and angle everything better for the for the, uh, for the camera so that you can see it. Uh, too many mics. Bear with me. We'll we'll get our, we'll get ourselves set up and we'll we'll check this out. Okay, I'm hoping that my little walk-in here is uh, sort of showing how I've got things set up. And I think we're basically ready to go here. And uh, now, hopefully you're going to be able to see the mouse cursor uh, that's moving right now at the top of the screen. Uh, Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into Lorex's menu system. Now, uh, the reason I'm doing this is because uh, way back when I was setting this up, uh, at least one of the viewers had indicated he wanted to know if I was going to do anything to describe this system, and um, I sort of said I would. Now this this is sort of part of what I do with it. So we're going to go into the playback. Now it, it's kind of complicated here, so uh, I'm going to sort of talk about what I'm thinking about at the moment. Uh, you'll notice over here we, in order to, it will, it, will, it will only play back four cameras at the same time. Now you have to deselect the first four. Now this is a nuisance. We shouldn't have to do that. Now one of the cameras that I want is camera 16. I want camera 8 and I want camera 16. Uh, no, I, I don't want camera 8. I just want camera 16. But where is it? There is no 16. Well, you have to, with the wheel on the mouse, you have to scroll down one. Now, Lorex should have had it so that, you know, how, how hard would it have been to have had all 16 showing at the same time here? It wouldn't have been that hard. Okay, enough complaining. 16 is selected. Now, you're going to notice over here, there is a lot of, you, you might say, yellow in the green line. Let, let's go back, uh, well, the zero that you see over here, that is midnight uh, last night. And then it goes through, and right now it's about 10.30 in the morning. Uh, yeah, I've been doing other things since I uh, started this uh, video. So the, these yellow marks that you see here indicate that there has been motion. So let's, let's just sort of put our cursor right here, all right? Now this was at 12.10 this morning. Now it's pretty hard to see this, so what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select 
so that we see 30 minutes at a time. Okay, now that really spreads it out. And you can see here my, my uh, uh, you might say, timeline indicator is moving along here. Uh, you know, 10, 10, uh, 20, uh, it's 12, 10, and 25, 28, and so on. It's moving ahead a second at a time. But if I come up here and click down on it, we should see what it is that caused that yellow line. Okay, you know what it was? It was smoke from my fireplace. Or not fireplace, but uh, from my furnace. Um, yeah. Okay, let's go to the next one. It's probably going to be that again. Yeah, okay. So we're going to go ahead. Now, in order to... Uh, th there it is again. More, you could see it. The uh, this, Well, it's not really smoke. It's more of a, uh, a mist or a cloud. Uh, my high efficiency furnace does not give off smoke. Okay, I'm going to go ahead to the next screen and it should be coming up really soon here. There we go. Okay, now here we have a couple of new ones. Is it going to be a rabbit or is it going to be more? It's more smoke. All right, let's go to the next one. More smoke. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm just going to go ahead until we find a rabbit. Okay, here we go. Here we go. We got a rabbit at 1.29 this morning. Well, 1.28 in a few seconds. Um, yeah, so uh, does it look like he's... Uh, no, he's, he's taken off. Okay, at about 3.18, we had a rabbit looking for remnants of carrots that were laying around in the grass. Does not seem to be interested in the uh, rabbit food. Now, there were a few little, a little uh, crumbs of carrots, you might say, laying in the grass there. Um, what, you know, either that rabbit or other rabbits had uh, sort of nibbled on and then, uh, uh, you know, uh, discarded. Oh, he's looking at it. He's sniffing, sniffing at it. I, I think he knows his food, or maybe she. No, it it wants the carrots. Does not want, does not want the r real rabbit food. Mind you, I guess carrots are real rabbit food. Just ask Bug, Bugs Bunny. <laughs> okay, three fifty six. Gives it a sniff. looks around watching for coyotes which by the way apparently there were coyotes this morning I guess I'll be showing you that tomorrow no it's sniffing around for the, what's left of the carrots uh, in fact you you can see a little piece of carrot right right there here's a, here's another one right here Okay, now we're at when I got up this morning. I've actually been up since about five. And this is when I, <clears throat> excuse me, when I looked into the surveillance monitor and saw this. This, this is the most promising yet. And this is where we're going to end this uh, particular segment because it's uh, pretty lengthy here. And there are a lot of people that could care less about rabbits or a leaf blower and they're interested in the model ship. Yeah, so, uh, okay. <clears throat> the rabbit is eating the pellets. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of cute. Let's get back to the model ship and see if we can get some of that photo etch uh, soldered together yet today. Um, yeah, we got to fasten the platform onto the, what I call the stringers. Okay. One more nibble? Yeah, one more nibble. Okay, we've seen enough. We know it works. We know they'll eat it. Okay. Normally, 
the model ship takes up most of the episode and the nonsense is sort of taking a back seat but I think today nonsense is going to prevail uh, all right we'll get this uh, right to the manual now at the at the top of the ladder we need a platform number 46 okay and at the bottom we need platform 32 now if you remember I mentioned that there were two number 32's and I don't know why and I still don't know why um, okay let, let's uh, recompose here and get in a little closer so we can see what's going on okay now you'll notice on the bottom of this platform there are two little you might call them pins positioning pins or to form sort of a hinge I imagine and they have to go if we turn this so that it is the same as it is in on the manual here it shows that okay where do I get Mr. T's pointer here alright let's move this out of the way just a little bit here didn't want to slide alright so it shows that this part right here which is actually this part right here that I'm just touching right now okay so this part right here goes up to and touches right here which is right there now are there holes there yes there are there are very tiny little macro lens type holes okay um, okay let's see if we can uh, turn this around now I have to go so very very slow even though our solder joint is quite strong the railing itself is not very strong and I don't want to have to do any more straightening here than than I absolutely have to um, let me get a different pair of tweezers maybe these ones here Let's see if I can grab onto it I guess I'm getting my head in the light aren't I now, can we fit this in here? I'm just trying to get the pin that is closest to my finger. Maybe I'll do it the other way first. Oh, we'll get Tony's tweezers here to help hold it. Oh, careful, Ron, careful. Maybe I'll turn the whole thing like this. Is this going to work better or not? No. I almost had it. Okay, now I, I, I know that these things are going to be at an angle. Why can I not get that? I wonder if the hole is maybe uh, smaller than the peg. Cause I am trying to get it on there. You know what? I'm afraid I'm going to have to do this off camera. Okay, now only those of you who actually have this kit will know how finicky it is to to have gotten both of these pins in the appropriate holes on the stringers um, after the stringer has been bent so that the in other words so it's the shape it is right now now what what I believe we have to do is to solder I'm going to solder this this piece uh, at an angle of about like that so that the uh, so that this this uh, 
post that I'm touching right now on, on, on the uh, railing is at the same angle as, as this one right here. That shouldn't be so too hard, you know, I maybe kind of lay it on its side so it's going to want to stay that way. I wonder if maybe I should be trying to squeeze it together just a little bit here. Now, not too much. You want to collapse it. Okay, now will it stay on its side? Well, maybe it'll, oops, I don't want to be spreading it. I should possibly be using the helping hands here to hold this. It just the ladder and treads and everything are so much heavier than everything else, they just want to flop over. Okay. Now some of you are thinking, Today is pizza day and we have to have the pizza segment yet, but I can assure you with all the other nonsense that's been going on, uh, the pizza segment will just consist of one bite and then we'll move on to something else, which will probably be me saying, see you tomorrow. Um, yeah, we must be well over half an hour now. Okay, yeah, I think we can, I think I can fasten it in the helping hands and then, and then we'll get it at the right angle and then we'll touch some solder, the heat to the solder and then it will instantly solder itself in the right position. Okay, let's, let's recompose here. Okay, I'm going to let that cool a little bit. I just took it out of the microwave. Now, I'm all set up here in the uh, helping hands. just want to make sure that we get the angle so that when this ladder is hanging down the side of the ship at almost a 45 degree angle or steeper, I guess. Oh, about 45, I think it would be about right. The platform will be horizontal. The, the platform itself will, re will represent the bottom tread. Um, okay, now, let's fade out the pizza music and start the, uh, my theme, which I forgot last night. Thanks for watching everybody, and all being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow.